Good morning, everyone. Or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's sing this one song as we prepare our hearts for worship. Let's stand together. Um, this is from um, Psalm 96. God is calling us to the place of worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Amen. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good. Let's sing in Korean. 좋으신 하나님. 좋으신 하나님 인자와 자비 영원히. 좋으신 하나님 인자와 자비 영원히. 한 나라 족속 한 백성만 세상. 
세상 모든 세계 영원토록 주겸해 할렐루야 할렐루야 주겸해 주 하나님 주겸해 주겸해 할렐루야 할렐루야 주겸해 주 하나님 People from every nation from every nation and home from generation to generation people from every nation and home from generation to generation we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are we worship you worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are you are
you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name And now my shame is gone I stand amazed In your love undeniable Your grace goes on and on And I will sing Of your goodness forevermore Worthy is your name Jesus The praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise
Let's bow our head for um, the confession of sins. Our Father, the day of Christ coming to Jerusalem, we confess our sins. We lived as if we were the master of our lives. We took for granted the things that you have provided us. We used things in our hands only for our glory and satisfaction. We didn't pay enough attention to coming of Christ as the Lord and the judge. Like the people in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, we have been so blind to the peace and justice that you brought to this world. Father, forgive us. We didn't lift up your name. We didn't give praise to you enough. We didn't obey the Holy Spirit. We didn't live for your kingdom. Give us pure heart and restore your spirit in us. Allow us to shout Hosanna to Christ and welcome him to our heart. Father, come and reign over us. Now we have a moment of silence and confess our sins to the Lord. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Let's Let's sing together hymn number 140. Ah. Uh -huh. 
We continually ask to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may. Have great endurance and patience in giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving, uh, guiding us here today. We attempt to live our lives wanting to be obedient and follow your example, but oftentimes, we live our lives according to our own selfish ways. Allow us to put away our old self and be made new in the image of you. Allow us to gain understanding of your will through wisdom and understanding through the Holy Spirit. Please allow us to live a life that is worthy of you and be able to bear fruit. Father God, Unfortunately, there seems to be various incidents that occurred that saddens our hearts. Some people lost their lives due to more recent shooting, school shootings, and others have lost their loved ones and their homes by tornado. Whatever the case may be, we pray that these people turn to you during these difficult times. We ask that you be the light and hope in the midst of their hardship and allow them to turn to you and find true comfort in you. <coughs> Lord, we pray for those who are baptism candidates, Ko Shion, Yi Sang Yun, and Yi Yong Sa. Help these people to acknowledge that they are sinners and accept you as their Lord and Savior. We pray that they can learn and grow in you as they publicly declare their love for you soon. We ask for your goodness and blessings to be poured out to them. Father God, we pray for Kuyok group and the two branch groups. We ask you to be with all the leaders. We ask for your wisdom and understanding and clarification as we try to dissect and learn through meditation and discussions with one another. Please be with all the members and their families as they make efforts to efforts to gather to, uh, priority. We started the Bible reading of the New Testament this year. Lord, you give us 24 hours in the day. Help us to de dedicate just 24 minutes of that day, um, daily, reading daily your word, praying, meditating, and learning. Help us to be diligent so that it becomes a habit. We pray that we don't um, read the Bible merely to fill our obligation or just to learn life's moral lessons, but truly be able to delve deep uh, so that we can hear what you want us to and be challenged so we can learn and grow and seek your will. We pray for missionaries all over the world and especially Wu family in Morocco and Lee family in Jordan. We ask that you be with them in all circumstances. They are truly servants of you who dedicated to follow your will. Allow us to keep them in our personal prayers as they, um, as, as well, and continually support them. Lord, we humbly ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit to be present here with us. Allow the good news to be spoken through your servant, Pastor Joe, and allow it to nourish us and challenge us. 
Please grant him wisdom and clarity so that your words can touch our hearts, comfort us, and inspire us to learn more. Please be with us throughout the entire worship. In his name I pray. Amen. children's sermon. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, we thank you so much today for the friends, for our family, and especially for you because of what you have done for us. Uh, today, Lord, uh, uh, pray for uh, the message today about you, about how you have come to Jerusalem, about how you have come, uh, even though you do what will happen, you came to die for us and Lord, I pray that we remember this. We, this week, we just remember how much you've done for us. And God, I pray that we will always praise you for it. Pray that you be with each and every one of us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So today, who knows what today is? What do we call today? Oliver, what's, what do we call today? What day of the week is it? Sunday, right? But today is a very particular Sunday. Lois, what, what do we call it? Palm Sunday, right? Why do we call it Palm Sunday? Yeah, Palm Sunday, like the hand. Why do we call it Palm Sunday? Because? Just because? <laughs> On a Sunday, it's about palms. Is that what happened? It's not about the, it's not about the palm of the hand. No, it's not about the palm of the hand. Um, we call it Palm Sunday because this day in our Bible was the day that Jesus came to Jerusalem riding on the donkey, and the people laid down their cloaks and their palm branches in front of them, right? And so we call it Palm Sunday because not only was it the name of the, the branches that were laid down in front of them, but at this time, palm was also, the palm tree and the palm branches also symbolized victory and symbolized triumph. And so when we talk about Palm Sunday, we talk about Jesus coming to Jerusalem, and we know in our story that when Jesus came to Jerusalem, when he came riding on the donkey and the people were shouting out his name and they were laying down their cloaks and their palm branches, we want to be like these people. We want to be like this crowd that was following Jesus. And that even though, uh, even though uh, Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, this is not his first time uh, you know, entering like, a new place, we want to be like the people where we lay down these palm branches. We symbolize Jesus' victory. We shout out Jesus' name from the rooftops, right? That we know that Jesus is our king. We know that he is coming. And these people knew that. They called out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And so today, with our, uh, uh, what the adults are doing today and what we're going to be talking about later today is just about what exactly Palm Sunday means, what it means for us what it means for us to accept Jesus in our hearts, what it means for us to proclaim and to announce his coming. And just like these people, that's what we want to do. Because we know Jesus is coming. And we want to be shouting and telling the world that he's, going, that he's coming soon. Yeah? You guys see if we can do that? Yeah? <laughs> All right, then let's pray. God, thank you so much today for this Palm Sunday, for this Sunday to worship you. But today, Lord, we just also want to commemorate how you came to Jerusalem triumphantly. 
you came to Jerusalem on the donkey, riding uh, over these cloaks and these palm branches that symbolize your victory. That you didn't come as, uh, as a war hero, you didn't come as anything like that, but you came as our king to save us. You came as our king to save us from our sins. So God, I pray today this message, Lord, of how you came. Lord, it's something that we remember, that we today and forever will always proclaim your coming, will always announce that you are coming soon. And God, we'll always remember that you are on your way. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's get ready to head back. So we have a communion today. So, um, 집사님, 네. As we just heard from um, children's message, uh, we are welcoming the Lord Jesus um, to our uh, church, to our families, and to our heart. So let's prepare our heart to take um, the communion together. Let's pray. Father, you are truly um, the creator and redeemer, and you are the source of life. We thank you for bringing us here to your table, and we, are, we will be fed uh, with your word, your grace, and your mercy toward us. Father, we thank you for being together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, these are the family of God, and when we take um, the cups and uh, bread, we celebrate your death and your, your coming soon. Father, be with us uh, this time of worship and anoint uh, this ceremony. That we, our, our focus is solely on to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So this is a sign um, 
that Jesus gave us his whole life. And when we take this, um, we remember his sacrifice and his love toward us. So let's say this um, to your friend. This is the body of Christ for you. This is the body of Christ for you. This is the body of Christ for you. Let's take it together. Also, we, uh, when we take this cup of covenant, uh, we also remember um, how much the Lord uh, loved us and um, didn't, didn't spare anything for us. So when we take it, um, say this to your uh, friend, this is the blood of Christ for you. This is the blood of Christ for you. This is the blood of Christ for you. Let's take it together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for feeding us with your, your grace, your love, and your sacrifice. We took this cup and bread with our brothers and sisters in you. And we thank you for being a family of God in Christ. As we um, continue to worship you, be with us, Lord, and be real to our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today's scripture uh, is Matthew 21, um, verse 12 to 17. Um, Esther Lee will read this passage for us.
And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant, and they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. And this is the word of God. Let's pray. Just like 2,000 years ago, um, Temple of Jerusalem, uh, we have so many things going on this morning. Um, Father, um, among these all the business and, um, and all the works, um, enable us to have a, a heart to you and prepare our heart uh, for you. Father, we are listening to your word. Open our heart, touch our heart, and strengthen our heart with your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So imagine you are coming to the Temple of Jerusalem um, 2,000 years ago as a um, Jewish man or a woman. So you uh, coming to the temple to make a sacrifice, uh, basically uh, worshiping God, right? So you go to the temple court, and um, because you are um, you you are from far uh, far away from uh, Jerusalem, uh, you need to buy um, something, um, animals, um, to make a sacrifice. So. Uh, you shop around, and uh, what should I buy? Um, cow or uh, lamb or pigeon? And you need to decide. And you bargain with the merchant. Oh, how much is that? How much is that? And you walk around and look around the animal. Which one is uh, more look more pure? Which one is uh, more uh, better um, to the Lord? And then you realize, oh my goodness, um, the, the temple, in, in the temple, uh, I can't use Roman coin because they, um, they don't allow us to use the, the, the ordinary coin. So I need to exchange my coin to the temple coin. So you go to a money changer and uh, also bargaining, what's the rate, uh, what's the interest, something like that. And then you check everything, oh, did I... Did I prepare any, everything, and did I, um, did I send my tithes through Venmo or PayPal? And you think about it, and you wonder, and uh, so crowded and so busy, and people walk around, people uh, buy something, people rush to the temple court to make a sacrifice, and all these things are very, very necessary to worship God. You can't miss the sacrifice before you really worship God as a Jewish man. You can't skip the animal when you go to the temple. You can't keep the money exchange because um, simply you can't. But today, the Lord Jesus Christ He's driving the sellers and buyers in the, in the temple court um, outside. You go out. You don't, need this. You, don't, you don't need this anymore. Sacrifice is not necessary anymore. And he said in verse 13, My temple shall be called the house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. I don't think Jesus is really um, criticizing uh, the money-making business here. It's simply uh, meaning the temple is supposed to be a place of prayer rather than 
making sacrifice and going through all the details and uh, religious practices and business. So his challenge for us, the temple is supposed to be the house of prayer. That challenge raises several questions. What is the whole point of being in temple, right? Or what is the whole point of coming to the temple? Why, we, why do we have a worship service there? Should we, should we worship God only there? And the point is really to meet God, not to make a sacrifice, not to um, do some religious activity or practice, but the whole point is to meet God there. Jesus came to Jerusalem to make a way to God for the sake of us, for our sake. He, this is the first, first day um, in Jerusalem, and he will be crucified at the end of the week. So he is anticipating his, his coming death. But the first place he visited was Temple of Jerusalem, and he wanted to correct the way uh, we all uh, worship God. We won't need to have the animal sacrifice anymore. That's what he was thinking. Because I am the eternal sacrifice for you. My sacrifice, my death will be enough. So you don't need animal sacrifice anymore. You don't need to come to the temple anymore except for prayer for meeting God. So then the next question will be, so why then the house of prayer, not house of uh, worship, not house of reading Bible? Why just a uh, house of prayer? I've been thinking about why is that so, right? I think because when you pray to God, you speak to him. You listen to him. You engage with him. When we worship together, sometimes our minds just go away. Right? When we praise, um, we, when we sing together to the Lord, sometimes our mind is a thousand miles away, not really engaging. We are just blind to the real living God before us. Sometimes that happens. But when you pray, this is you speaking to God. This is you listening to a living person, God, in your prayer. So when Jesus said, my temple should be called the house of prayer, the whole point is when you go to the temple, you're actually meeting, <clears throat> you're actually meeting God. And that is the whole point of being Christian. That's the whole point of being in the temple. In the New Testament, Bible says we are the temple of God because the Spirit of God dwells in us. That's 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? So now we are the temple of God, not temple in the Jerusalem, not temple in somewhere. We are moving temple of temple of God in this world. And that is our consolation, isn't it? Christ came and he is among us. He is dwelling in us. I mean, in us, plural. You know, uh, when we gather together, he is among us. But at the same time, our body is also temple of God. So he is with us individually, personally. That is big consolation. But until you 
seek him in your prayer. But until you seek his face in your, I mean, in your heart, God is not really real to you. You can worship without any sense of God. You can read the Bible without noticing he is with you. You can evangelize people without working with God. So I should say until we seek the face of God, until we earnestly seek him, God is not really real to us. But unfortunately, the uh, religious leaders, the priests and scribes, they didn't recognize Jesus in the temple of Jerusalem. Rather, they just scolded this unknown prophet. Um, why do you do nothing about these children singing Hosanna to the son of David? They completely um, didn't recognize who he was and who this person really um, is doing in Jerusalem, right? But who recognized him? Who recognized Christ? It was the blind. The blind recognized Christ. Who came to Christ? It was the lame, it was the cripple. They came to Christ who praised Christ. It was children, not the adult, not the religious leader, not the high priest. It was just children, very immature, and didn't have much knowledge about the religious um, thing, but they just recognized Jesus recognize this person is Christ, and they, they sing to Christ. Hosanna. What does it teach us? All the religious leaders didn't recognize Christ. But the blind, the cripple, and children, they recognize him, and they they found him, they came to him, they, they praised him, right? What does it teach us? I should say, those who know their blindness will see Christ. God, I am so blind. God, I am so blind to your grace. God, I am so blind to your mercy. God, I am so blind everything you have done for me. Those people will see Christ, even though they are blind. Those who know their brokenness, they will come to Christ. God, I am so crippled. My life is so lame. I didn't walk in the right way. I know my sin. I know my mistake. I know I'm totally broken. So I come to you. The one who knows his or her brokenness will, will come to Christ and be cured. And those who know their weaknesses and immaturity, they will sing to Christ. Father, I am so mature. Father, I am so, um, so weak. I have so many shortcomings. I'm, I'm like a child. But if you realize how immature you are in the faith journey, when you realize how weak you are in this world, you will come to Christ and ask him to cure you, to seek you, to recover you. They are the ones who really recognize Christ, come to Christ, and serve Christ. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus said the temple of God should be the house of prayer. If we are the temple of God and we should be the house of prayer, well, what happened in that house? When we pray, we confess and realize, God, I'm so blind. I didn't, I didn't thank you for your grace and mercy enough. When we pray and come to the presence of God, we realize we're so broken. We're not really living a right way. We realize it. So we ask Christ, would you heal me? Would you cure me? Would you guide me? So we come to the very presence of Christ. When we think about our immaturity as a grown up, as a senior or college student, we humbly submit ourselves to the wisdom of God and ask him to be with us with his power and wisdom. You may be busy with all the um, activities in life and even worship. A Sunday morning is the busiest time in, in a week, right? You prepare so many things, and oh my goodness, uh, this week I have something to do. But today, Christ is among us, and he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Lord made us the temple of God, and that is a promise he would never, ever leave us. He will dwell in us, and he is dwelling in us. Every time we gather together to worship, to have a fellowship, to um, have a Bible study, do not lose sight of uh, the Lord. Do not uh, make you so, so, so busy with um, unnecessary things, but recognize Christ who is among us and seek his face together. Then he will heal your blindness to see God among us. He will cure you to walk in the light and he will make you sing to the Lord. And that's how we become the true image of God and true temper of God. Let's pray. Father, this time of worship, we look up to you. We ask you to be with us every, every moment and everywhere we go. In this world, you put us as temple of God and walk, working, studying, and living in this city. Enable us to recognize you everywhere we go. And encourage us to seek your face where we work, where we study and ask your wisdom and strength and peace for the people around us. They will see you through us and they will come to your son, Jesus Christ. We want that. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together hymn number 539 um, and we will give offering to the Lord. Sheep 
십자가 사랑을 믿어 내 잠을 너받으라 주 예수께 조용히 나가 내 마음을 쏟아놓으라 늘은 미리 보시는 주님 그 은혜를 베푸시리 주 예수의 은혜를 내 슬픔이 없어지리 내 이웃을 늘 사랑하여 너 받은 거 거져주라 주 예수께 조용히 나가 내 마음을 쏟아놓 신은 주님 그 은혜를 베푸시리 주 예수를 친구로 삼아 늘내 옆에 모시어라 그 영원한 생명새 물에 내 마른 목 죽이어라 주 예수께 조용히 나가 내 마음을 쏟아놓으라 늘은 미리 보시는 주님 그 은혜를 베푸시 주님과 사귀어 살면 새 생명이 넘치리라 주 예수를 찾는 참 밝은 빛 비추어라 주 예수께 조용히 나가 내 마음을 쏟아놓으라 늘은 미리 보시는 주님 그 은혜를 베푸시리 It was my mistake. I skipped the, um, the announcement, so... Let me make um, some announcement to you. Well, right after this service, um, uh, we will have a general assembly or the college student, you may, um, you may be dismissed, um, but if you like, um, you can join, of course. Uh, we have a Good Friday service coming Friday, 7.30 here. Um, so come to um, come this place and um, let's have a service together. <clears throat> Next week, which is Easter Sunday, we, we will have a baptism ceremony and then we will have a uh, lunch fellowship together at the fellowship hall. Uh, this year, <clears throat> we, we have three baptism candidates, um, the brother um, Xion, um, Sangyeon, and Yongso, uh, the sister Yongso. Uh, please pray for this candidate. Um, that they could complete the baptism class successfully and um, yeah, go through this whole process wonderfully. Uh, from today, um, Brother Sungwon Cho, um, she will serve as an intern for KBC Ministry. You know, um, Christian is graduating and uh, the Sungwon will be the replacement for, for that. Okay, now uh, let's stand up. <laughs> let's pray. <clears throat> May our Father pour out his love to your heart. May our Lord Jesus Christ 
open your mouth to cry out for the kingdom of God. May the Spirit of God sanctify your body to spread the peace of Christ. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.